Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Manning Field for Catholic Central League girls soccer. Always a big one. This is like I always used to say, welcome to Thanksgiving in whatever month it was because it was always Fenwick and St. Mary's playing each other on Thanksgiving Day. They don't do that anymore after that total fiasco a couple of years ago on Thanksgiving Eve at, at Fenwick. This girls' Fenwick team is undefeated. They've got six wins. They've got five ties. 6-0-5. Six, oh, St. Mary's 5-6-2 five, and two, trying to get to 500. You need to get to 500 to have a shot, and I mean a shot, because you don't get in to the tournament. Everything is totally different in the tournament this year. Football, soccer, field hockey. It used to be north, south, east, and west, and you'd be playing locally. Now um, they only take 30, in soccer, they only take 30, 32 teams in each division statewide. That means that anybody below that 32, assuming you are 500, shot from a very tough angle. I think that was Maloney, easily handled by Claudia Keith in that for Fenwick. So anybody, you had to be at least 500. If you're 500 and you're below the 32, nice job by McGuire to break up the play. If you're below 32, you have to have a play-in game to get into the top 32. The problem is, even with the top 32, it's statewide, so you could be playing anybody, anywhere, at any time. You could be playing in Sturbridge. You could be playing in North Dakota. Uh, you have to travel throughout the state. If you're not, and even if you're in the top 32, you'd have to be way up near the top in order to get a home game. Kip straight ahead, hit the goal post, behind the net, out of play. And McGuire's gonna kick it away. And in football, it's the top 16 in each division. And then anybody 500 would have a playing game to try and get in the tournament to try and get to the Super Bowl. And again, you could be playing anywhere, anybody, anytime. That's going to go out of play, I think. Try to keep it in, couldn't. Claudia Keith is in net for Fenwick. Kylie Kennison for St. Mary's. Chief Flaherty, the head coach for Fenwick. Jimmy Foley, the longtime coach for St. Mary's, has been around for a while. He does an awful lot for St. Mary's. That one bounced up. And I think they're saying it got St. Mary's on the hand or the arm. And Fenwick will get a free kick. And it will be McKenna Gilligan, left footed, taking the kick. And she fires it up right to the net. Kennison makes the catch with a couple of white shirts bearing down on her. They do it in football, they don't do it in soccer. I don't know some of these young ladies for Fenwick, they could be from Lynn. Came to play on was virtually a home field. Difficult time for Coach Jim Foley and the Spartans. It's not easy when your leading scorers are a freshman and an eighth grader. He graduated some important people from last year. But the only thing Jimmy can hang his hat on is he's got a young team, a very young team, that 
in a year or two, it's going to be as good as anybody around. Sophie Skabikas is the leading scorer for St. Mary's, and she's an eighth grader. They pass it deep, and Fenwick gets around, gets around again, and the shot went off the side of the foot. Great try by Allie Mitchell. She took it down the near side, made a couple of nice moves, took it to the middle, and just as she was taking the shot, it went off the side of her foot and went out to the middle where they took a shot that went wide. Kennison kicks it away. And St. Mary's will finally get it in the Fenwick end. This is Kabikas knocking it ahead. Fenwick breaks it up and takes it back the other way. And they knock it deep. And booted away by Maguire. And they'll give it back to Keith to kick it away. Pop straight up in the air. And with controls. And St. Mary's takes it away and takes it away again. Uh, Maloney looking to get it. Fenwick will kick it into the St. Mary's bench area and St. Mary's will get the throw in. Not a bad day. A lot of clouds, blue skies, a little bit of a breeze. It's not really ice cold. It's really been strange getting, getting through the middle of October still wearing a short sleeve shirt on most days and it will be in the middle of this week up in the 70s. And knock it off Fenwick back into the St. Mary's bench area. And they'll move the throw in a little bit further down deep. It skips past St. Mary's. And they call St. Mary's offside. So it's kind of difficult when you've got underclassmen. You know, like I said, eighth grader. Freshman, sophomore, playing against some well-experienced seniors. Fenwick has nine of those seniors. They knock it deep. Now we're trying to get there, trying to knock it around Fritz. Get knocked out by Fenwick, and McGuire will kick it away. He kicks a ground ball picked off by Fenwick. Trying to throw it in front. Yeah, we didn't quite get to the net. Kennison stepped up just outside the near post, picked it off, and she'll kick it away. The shot coming from Allie Mitchell again. Knock deep, Kennison will come out of the net and play it. Knocked deep by Sam Shop from Fenwick. So Kennison will boot it away. High boot. Just past midfield. Big hop. Now he tips it back to the middle. Broken up nicely by Sarah Bell Diaz. She's played very well this year for St. Mary's. She knocks it deep. Keith will come out of the net over to the far side and just throw it upfield. And Fenwick bringing it right back. Uh, 
Locked away by Fritz. And they bang it out. Ryan knocks it away. And blocked. And that got Diaz right up around the shoulder of the chest area. She grimaced a little bit. Sharp will put it in play. Gets it back. A couple of nice little chips by Isabella Del Vecchio. And it's knocked away. Samiris knocks it deep. Chip. I think she's trying to kick it upfield. She chipped it to the near side. I think that was McKenna Gilligan. And Fritz was trying to put it in play and threw it out of play. Now we'll go get the throw in. Blocked nicely by Diaz. Diaz doesn't take any prisoners. She's banging around. She lets people know she's out there. <coughs> she's got it now. A couple of nice shifts. Brought it inside. Looking to the far side. Trying to throw it in front, they get knocked away. And she really knocks it back upfield. And it takes it right back. Winds up in the middle. Nice little shift. And she tried to pass it in front, and there was Maguire knocking it away. Good defense. Couple of nice shifts, still with it. To the near side. Maloney with it. They get around, they get around again, looking to walk in. Skabikas looking to take the shot, it got blocked. She had to pull it around one more defender. She went around two. Had to try and get around the third. And this is a break. Mitchell's going to walk in. Kennison comes out, tries to block the angle, and Mitchell knocks it in. She wound up all by herself. Kennison tried to come out and get it. The best she could do was try to cut down the angle. And Mitchell threw it in. So that pressure by Fenwick pays off. Allie Mitchell had a couple of shots. Now she can, it wound up by the defense. She walked in all by herself. Kennison tried to hustle out. She was looking to smother it, take it away. The best she could do was cut down the angle and Mitchell just knocked it into the open net behind Kennison. So not quite 15 minutes in, Fenwick grabs a one nothing lead. I mentioned these games are always World War III. They had a sour taste in everybody's mouth after the Thanksgiving Day game a few years ago and it stopped the Thanksgiving games, St. Mary's and Fenwick, over that incident. And since then, it's been every game is World War Three, especially the St. Mary's. And they look to they blow the whistle a little bit late. They got wrapped up and Fenwick player went down. But especially for St. Mary's, they got annihilated that Thanksgiving Eve night playing their young kids against Fenwick. 
and he thought that Fenwick rubbed it in. So every time they play, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, field hockey, and there they go again. They call them offside. They got loose. The left foot went wide anyway, but they were wide open for a shot. I think that was Del Vecchio. But they called her offside. McGuire will kick it away. They merely stand on it, looking to get it back. It winds up going out. Fritz will put it in play. Just knocked away from Silva. McGuire knocks it upfield. Popped up. And we finally gets control. And they look to knock it deep. They get it deep. And we couldn't keep it in. Looking at the young lady that was out in front, number seven, they don't have it. They added three names to their roster, but they didn't put any numbers down. So I'm going to say that was either Irene Corren, Ella Demakis, or Sky Dempsey. I'll name all three wearing number seven because they put the three names down on the roster, but didn't put numbers next to them. So one of them has to be that number seven added to the Fenwick roster. They tip it by, broken up by Maguire. They give it all the way back to Gilligan. Ramirez breaks it up. And they start it back the other way. They knock it deep. And Keith will come out almost to the 10 yard line and pick up the ground ball. And she was looking to throw it to one of her defensemen, but instead she's going to kick it away. And she boots it to midfield and beyond. Popped up. Headed away by Fenwick. Mary shuffles over and kicks it upfield. And Fenwick knocks it out. It skipped right past. Knocking it deep, she nearly knocks it back. Nice little shift, and they knock it deeper. And a woman's not going to get there before Keith tracks down the long pass. And she just throws it ahead. Amy Hatfield kicked it up. Now it goes out. And Fritz again will put it in play. Off the head, but then it goes off the foot or the leg of St. Mary's. Straight up by a loss. Then we got broken up, but they got it back and kicked it deep, and it's knocked away. 
into the Fenwick bench area. And it's in there, he's launch it away again. Pop straight up in the air. High hop. St. Mary's gets control, trying to knock it deep. Fenwick knocks it away. Broken up by St. Mary's. Fenwick takes it back. Looking to walk in. Canison comes out and grabs it first. They pushed it by the defense. And it just popped a little bit to the right. Canison was able to get there first. Good hustle, St. Mary's takes it away. Awumi, trying to get by, gets double teamed, and they're gonna call Awumi from a takedown. Looked like that Fenway player just fell down and wasn't taken down, but they called it. All the way back to Keith. And it certainly has dominant territory wise and had the better opportunities. St. Mary's yet to get a shot on net. St. Mary's couldn't keep it in. And we'll go get the throw in. A little bit past the halfway mark of this first half. The one goal by Allie Mitchell. The difference. Fenwick leading 1 0. Fenwick had a, a, I said they got five ties. One of them was against. Bishop Fian, who was the number one team in the state, they were ranked nationally. They came in here and had a very easy time against St. Mary's. Shutting St. Mary's out, they won the game easily. And now they turned around and went to Fenwick and Fenwick tied Bishop Fian one to one. That's a huge point for Fenwick against a team like Bishop Fenwick. Uh, Bishop Fian, excuse me. In fact, like now that I think about it, I think they beat Bishop Fian. I think they beat him one to nothing. I don't think they tied him. I think they beat him one to nothing. Vecchio. And it wasn't a Vecchio, it was Pellicini putting it in play. And St. Mary's couldn't keep it in. So Bellasini will put it in play again. From a little further down. Knocked away by Diaz. Gets it to the far side. Knocking it to the far side. Uh, St. Mary's went down. No, no call there. And Penwick comes up and knocks it away. I think that was Gilligan. They knock it deep down the near side. Pushing it ahead. Getting around. Throwing it out in front. And they knock it home. A great play. Rushing down the near side. They threw it across. It went by everybody. 
and getting up and getting a foot on it and tipping it. Kennison was looking for the shot coming from the near side. It came from the other side. And I want to say it, it was Haley Lawrence that knocked it home. But that pass came from who we don't have on the roster. Came, we'll give them all credit. Irene Cor uh, Cameron, Ella Demakis, Sky Dempsey, one of those three wearing number seven. Made the great pass across. And we'll check it again, but I think, I'm pretty sure it was Haley Lawrence, who was only a freshman. Went up, got the foot on almost knee high, and knocked it behind Kennison. And with just under 16 minutes left, Fenwick has opened up a 2 nothing lead over St. Mary's. For the first pass. So we double checked during the timeout, and it was the freshman, Haley Lawrence, getting that goal. But we gave all three of those young ladies. Uh, it wasn't until I got up here in the press box and the game was starting that I noticed that they added Lawrence again, almost knocked it home. Off Kennison, out. Femmick will get a corner kick. She beat the defense again and drilled it. Kennison going to the near post on your TV at home. The far post coming from the shot from the far side. Kennison just got a piece and just tipped it out uh, Lawrence would have got her second goal very quickly. Out in front, and they knock it home. It bounced. They shot it. The defense made the play. And that was one of the captains, Isabella Del Vecchio. But the first shot was there. They tipped it. Kennison made the save. Second shot, I think it was McGuire, the defender, that made the save. And then they finally knocked it home. Just had a little chip sitting right on the doorstep. So three different scores, and with 14 minutes left, Fenwick has opened up a 3 nothing lead. And we got bodies going down as I think the two boys down got hit by the kick from Diaz. And now St. Mary's will get the free kick. And they blew it away. Fenwick sends it back the other way. Diaz got a piece. Knocked away. Down deep, trying to keep it in. Bellwick knocked it out. Went into the St. Mary's at bench area. Quick throw in. Bellwick knocks it out again. And 
bouncing around back in the St. Mary's bench area again. And uh, substitutions first. Another full day here at Manning Field. It'll be a triple head of soccer. I think these girls play in the next one. Glasgow girls will play the last one. The amazing thing is the ratings came out, the new ones came out today, and I was told the Glasgow girls soccer uh, is, is 12 0 and 2. And they're ranked 44th. Which means they're not automatically in the tournament being undefeated. They would have to have a playoff game. How's that? Undefeated. And they would have to play like Shrewsbury or someplace. To, get, to have a chance of moving up into the 32. Corner kick coming for St. Mary's. They get it up and it goes behind the net, up on top and out of play. That's the closest they've come to a shot on net. And we could dominate here early on the field and on the scoreboard. He kicks it away. That's about her only duty. So far in this game, she hasn't seen a shot on net. Now it tips it ahead. Broken up by Maguire. Forcing them to go deep. They pop it up from long range. They leave it, looking for a shot. I think it's Fritz clearing it away. Shot from long range. Kennison will play it on a hop. I think it was Kiera Morgan. They give it back to Keith. This is the only time they get, she gets a chance to touch it. Trying to knock it deep, knocked away. Okay. Looking for a lead pass and it went up too far. Kennison will get it and kick it away. That was Ella Morgan, dead center, trying to, trying to lead. Number seven, who we don't know who it is. They take it away. Knock deep. And St. Mary just got crunched. A little hip check. And that's what happens when a senior runs into an eighth grader. Or a freshman, I think it was Maloney. Maloney made a great impression. She just became a freshman. She was an eighth grader last year, and she was a Catholic Central League All-Star first baseman. She helped St. Mary's win the Catholic Conference. She had a tremendous year at first base. And she's playing very well for the soccer team. Someone gives it away, but now they block it. Puzo tries to center it. Back to Puzo. And they call St. Mary's offside. 
I think it was Skavikas who got caught behind everybody, got bumped. And actually, it was Maloney who got bumped off the play. And when Puzo gave the pass back, Maloney was offside. Trying to knock it deep. They'll let it go all the way through to Keith out almost to the 10 yard line. Seven minutes and counting left in a big first half for Fenwick. Trying to sweep the series. They beat St. Mary's at Fenwick. So they're trying to make it two in a row over the Lady Spartans. Guire is there to knock it away. And McGuire again. Get her go all the way through to Gilligan. She pushed it to the far side. Now they'll give it back to Keith. And she'll just kick it away. Deflected, Fenwick takes it away. Try to walk around, nice defense by St. Mary's. I think it was Maguire, just before they could get the shot off. And there's Maguire battling again and knocking it loose. Fenwick just kept it in, St. Mary's takes it away. Diaz coming back, a nice little shift. Try to knock it deep. Blocked. Knocked down by Amy Hatfield. And Fenwick has it blocked. Broken up by Diaz. Skabikas. And knock it deep. Picked off. Broken up by St. Mary's. And it's going to go out of play off St. Mary's. Fenwick puts it in play. Maguire hustles and knocks it away. She's playing well. Maguire again gets a foot on it. Picked off by Skabikas. Trying to knock it deep down the far side. St. Mary's. Trying to cut back to the middle. They were trying to make the pass across field. Trying to get it. A woomy. Someone knocks it out. McGuire will take the corner kick from the far side. Second corner kick, the last one went up on the top of the net. They had no chance in a play at all. And this one was behind the net as well. So we've got three minutes and counting left in this first half. St. Mary still doesn't have a shot on net.
Keith kicks it away. Makes a big hop. And the fellow's got control. Broken up by Diaz. Trying to knock it deep. Maloney trying to keep it in. And does. Great hustle. And the fellow takes it away. Maloney. Full speed ahead, got to it, couldn't stop her momentum, carried it by them. She kept it in play, but that left it for Felwick to knock it away. And they knocked it out. Popped up, loose. Long range shot. They finally get a shot on net from long range. An easy hop for Keith to make the save. That was Kubikas. And we've got two minutes in counting. Left in this first half. Wise go down as they knock it back to Gilligan. He kicks it to the far side. Pushed up. It went off Molly Jenkins. She nearly cleared it away. Now they knock it deep, looking for a break. They get by. Kansa comes out, cuts down the angle, and the ball went by. They had the open net. They reached across Kennison, got a foot up, got a piece of it, and just knocked it wide. Time winding down in this first half. Wumi's pass broken up. She gets it back, broken up again. And that just missed with Celia Kraus, Kraus, who just missed taking that ball away from Kennison. She tipped it just over Kennison, but couldn't get a lot on it and just tipped it wide. Otherwise, it would be 4 nothing here at halftime. But the whistle sounds a big first half by Fenwick because they got three different scorers. St. Mary's finally got their one shot on that late, very late in the half. And at halftime, it's Fenwick three, St. Mary's nothing. Welcome back. We're underway in the second half, and it was a little bit late because I went down and got the numbers of the three young ladies they left off. One of them is not playing because she's hurt. But it was Sky Dempsey who got the assist. Irene Cameron is hurt, not playing. We're sorry for that. Ella Dempsey is the other one that we now know the number wise. As Kennison kicks it away. So we're underway in the second half. 3 0 Fenwick. Three different goal scorers. Gene. We know Haley Mitchell is a junior. We know Haley Lawrence is a freshman. 
I don't know. Excuse me. Isabella Del Vecchio is a senior. Those are the three goal scorers. I don't know the class of Sky Dempsey because they just put her position rather than her school year. So if the Marys got to hold the dig themselves out of it, if they can, against undefeated Fenwick. Trying to knock it deep. Keith comes out of the net, grabs it, and holds on. And she was going to throw it away, kick it away. Now she's going to kick it away. And she gets it to midfield. And it went off St. Mary's. Walking in, they throw it deep. It was a little bit behind, so they couldn't get the shot. Breaking down the middle was Ella Morgan. And if the pass was a little further out in front, she would have had one step and a scoring opportunity. But it was just a little bit behind. It skips past and they'll give it back to Keith off the foot of Hatfield. Killigan gets it upfield. And they were trying to throw it deep. Ella Morgan just sliced it off her foot out of play. She was trying to s send Mitchell in. Diaz. Samiris will knock it away. Fenwick looking for a break, broken up nicely. They take the shot. Kenison dove to make the save. It went by, but it went by wide beyond the post, out of play. Uh, I think that was Del Vecchio again. And here he's knocking it deep down the far side. They get their first, knocked it a little deeper, they knocked it too far, it's gonna go out of play. Keith again will kick it away. They knock it deep, looking for a break. Fenwick walks around, around again, looking to take the shot. Kennison had to make the save. That was Scott Dempsey who got the assist in the first half. She made a great move, taking the ball away deep and then moved around the defense, got a good shot. Kenson had to make a big time save. Olivia Egan, her and McGuire, Fritz, love it. They played very well all year for St. Mary's back on that defensive 
backfield, if you will. Pacharelli's pass got picked off. That's Lovett kicking it deep. Headed away by St. Mary's. Uh, that's Isabella Skabikas trying to get around the defense. They took it away. And Dempsey will take it down, pushing it. There's Love it knocking it out. And we're going to whistle for St. Mary's play it down. St. Mary's going to wind up with a free kick. Just inside midfield, actually inside the 45. McGuire will take it. Tips fast, and go get there first and knock it out of play. Yeah, knocks it deep, bounces by everybody. Skips fast again. Fritz broke it up. Egan knocked it away. Someone's trying to knock it deep. Fritz knocks it away over there. Diaz knocks it upfield. Skabikas. That's Isabella Zabikas. Her pass picked off. And they knock it deep. And it was a foot race. Kennison has to come out. They missed it. And walking in is Ellie Morgan. Kennison trying to come out and get it. Morgan pushed it by her. And she was all by herself looking at a wide open net. So it makes that hole a little deeper for the Spartans as it's now four to nothing. And it's been all Fenwick. St. Mary's had one shot on net and it came from a little bit of a distance. A big hop to Keith making a save. The two corner kicks never made it out in front. They went behind the net. Now they get it to the near side. They knock it deep. Mitchell on the fly. He get blocked. And knocked out by Lovett. Kennison will boot it away. They'll knock it back to Keith. They get around one, coming down the near side. Knocking it deep to the middle. 
Talked a little further back for Mitchell. Had to wait for her, but now she walks in, takes the shot, got too much foot. She had, going to the far post, she had almost half or more of the net to shoot at, but she got under it, chipped it high over the net and out of play. McGuire will kick it away. Uh, Fenwick picks it off. Tip by Fenwick will track it down. Pushing it down deep, trying to walk around. Still walking around but lost it, pushed it too far. And then Kennison has to make the save. They lost it. It wound up right on the foot of Haley Lawrence, who's got a goal in the game. Made a couple of nice shifts around the defense, trying to line up the shot, lost it, and went right on the foot of Lawrence, who drilled it, and Kennison made the save. Pushing it down, knocking it deep, looking for a break. Kennison will come out first. And that was Irene Karen. Looking to track that one down. Irene Karen, you can, you can pick Irene Karen out. She's got the bright red or pink shoes, but she's also got the only gold number for Fenwick. Everybody... Got like a brownish dark number. Her number is gold. She was one of those three that was just added to the roster. Now we're breaking it up again. St. Mary's just can't get anything going offensively. They knock it deep. Everybody looking for a break. Trying to walk in. They push it ahead. They push it too far. Two Fenwick Crusaders looking for the ball, but pushed it too far. Kennison was able to go get it and boot it away. Again, they'll kick it back to Keith. Diaz pushed to the near side. Fifteen minutes into the second half, Fenwick has added a goal to their lead at halftime. They lead it 4 nothing over the Lady Spartans. And Catholic Central League action. We mentioned another full day here at Manning. There'll be English girls will be taking on Chelsea girls in the next game. And then interconference, it'll be Lynn Glasgow will take on Salem Charter. High school school having great success in the GBL. The golf team won the GBL championship. Volleyball team won the GBL championship. Soccer girls won the GBL championship. Lynn Glasgow doing well joining the Greater Boston League. McGuire will get the kick from the 40-yard line. And St. Mary's actually got a foot on it, but I couldn't really control it. It just kind of floated in for Keith to make the save. I think it was, 
I thought it was Puzo. We're going to get a piece of it. Pushed ahead. Love it. We'll knock it away. St. Mary's will collect. And I went, got a piece of it, but it was St. Mary's that knocked it into the St. Mary's bench area. St. Mary's coming back. They knock it deep and they knock it too deep. It's going to go out of play. So St. Mary's had a couple of shots from long range that Keith got a good look at, able to make the save. A couple of corner kicks that went high on top of the net rather than going out in front and that's been it. They knock it deep and it's going to go out of play. Last weekend was a big weekend for the football teams, all three. English didn't play. There was a snarl in, if you will, in the scheduling, change over the guard at Maskinormit. English was supposed to play Maskinormit. And there was a mix up, and they wound up having two games scheduled for Maskinormit, so they didn't play English. English threw a bye. But Tech, classical, and St. Mary's all won. So it was a sweep. And the classical boys won a soccer game on Saturday night. So it made it 4-0 and for the Lynn teams over the weekend. But it's not starting this new week off that way with St. Mary's trailing 4 to nothing. And here he's knocking it away, knocking it deep. It gets broken up. So we're coming right back. And here he takes it away. Coming back, Skabikas. Cross field. Tipped and knocked out. Uh, both teams pointing. And they're going to give it to St. Mary's. Egan will put it in play. St. Mary's gets by. And they couldn't get their foot on it to center it. And it went off them. It goes out of play. Halfway through and counting the second half as Fenwick makes wholesale changes. So Fenwick obviously is going to stay undefeated. They're going to go to 7 0 and 5. Jim Mears will drop a little further under 500. They're going to have to have a huge run at the end if they want to get in it at least get into a, a playoff mode to get into the playoffs it gets tipped Fenwick collects they kept it in and St. Mary's knocks it out The Bears will drop a couple of games on the 500. They're going to go to 5, 7, and 2. So they're going to have to have a huge finish.
not easy in this Catholic Central League with the Fiends and the Stangs and the Fenwicks. That one gets popped straight up in the air over everything out of play. Maguire pops it straight up in the air. Headed away. Knocked down. By Hatfield. Kabikas. Trying to gain control. Finally does. They tip it to the middle. Awumi knocked off the play. Fenwick takes it back. And both teams will make multiple substitutions. Knocked down. Skabikas was trying to move around. Pushing it by. Looking to center it. They lined up the shot. Couldn't get the shot off. It got knocked away. And then Skabikas was finally almost falling away. Isabel Skabikas just got a foot on it. He's had a couple of chances. Fenwick got a piece of it. It deflected. Skabikas is actually falling away out around outside the 10 yard line. And it finally falling away, got a left footed shot that Keith was able to handle easily. Fenwick finally knocks it out. And you throw it in, it's going to go by everybody and out of play. So coming up on 15 minutes left, Keith will kick it away. And that's been the most of what her duties have been here in this game. She hasn't had to make really any difficult saves or potential scoring saves. Skabika's trying to walk in, takes the shot. There's a save. Sophie Skabika's a couple of nice moves, got around the defense, and was denied by Keith on a very nice save. That's the first legitimate scoring opportunity. They've had a couple of shots on net, but they're from long range, and Keith has been able to get a good look and make the save. That one, she had to come alive. And this one, she has to come alive also. That... It was from long range, but had a little bit of mustard on it. So it gets there. Can't keep it in.
That last shot was by Skabikas again, I think. The Keith had to make a pretty good save on. Trying to get it to the middle. Someone breaks it up. St. Mary's takes it away. Uh, someone picks off the pass. And they move it to the near side. And Fenwick knocking it deep. Now it's a foot race. Someone will get there and keep it in. You have to chase it down the near side. Trying to center it. Knock loose. Everybody trying to get a foot on it. It's right at everybody's ankles, they can't get a shot at it. And they finally push it out. Off Gilligan. It was just laying right at everybody's feet. Everybody was trying to get a tip it by, trying to get control of it, couldn't. Gilligan finally knocked it out. It's going to go out of play. Skabik is trying to walk around. Knocks it deep. Maloney trying to get there. It got knocked out by Gilligan. Kabik is trying to get loose. Can't. It's knocked away. Fenwick knocking it deep. And he knocked it too deep. Fenwick would have got there first. But it got knocked out of play. Knock it deep, it got blocked, but then St. Mary's knocked it out in front. Shot. I don't know if it was on net. It looked like it was going to go wide. Keith made sure she went up and got a piece of it and knocked it out. <coughs> I think that was Mahoney. Gained the shot off. And Keith just dove and hit it with two hands and knocked it out. It might have gone just wider than near post. I think this is St. Mary's first corner kick of the second half. The last two they had in the first half went up on top of the net and went behind. Coming from the near side. Out in front, deflected away by Fenwick. And is Isabella Skabikas knocking it wide. And Fenwick will make wholesale changes. Five to be exact. As with 10 minutes and counting left in this one. The only question left will be will St. Mary's get on the board? Or will they get shut out? Because it's four to nothing. And now there's nine minutes left. So Fenwick is going to stay undefeated. And like I said, the, the best St. Mary can hope for is to get on the board. We're trying to knock it deep. McGuire knocked it away. Popped up.
They knock it deep. It's a foot race. Kennison got there first and knocked it away. Oh, yeah, got broken up. Now look right back at it. It's a Mitchell who just had, almost had that breakaway a moment ago. Trying to walk in, walks right in, takes the shot. Great save by Kennison. And they try to chip it home. Mitchell, who got the first goal, made a great shift around, beat a couple of defenders, walked in, looking for the far post, had it. Kennison made a great save, knocked it away. And Dempsey, who got an assist in the first half, looking for a goal, didn't try to knock it down and knock it in the open end. She tried to chip it one time and chipped it wide. Otherwise, the score would now be five to nothing. Skabikas punches it ahead. See, Mary's looking to walk in. Maloney had the shot. She chipped it high. Keith went high in the air and just got a piece of it. It was going over her head. It was going in the net. Great bid by Maloney. Nice save by Keith. And then she tracked down the loose ball before St. Mary's could get their foot on it. And she boots it away. That's probably the closest St. Mary's has come to, to putting the ball in the net. Maloney had it. If that goes by Keith, it's in the net. Keith, high as she could go, just got a piece of it. Fenwick looking to knock it deep. St. Mary's is there to break it up. That's Fritz, I believe. Shot from long range. Kennison has to make the save, diving. I think that was Del Vecchio looking for her second goal. Constein looking for the pass back. Fenwick broke it up. Carries it. Hatfield trying to knock it deep. Fritz breaks it up. Fenwick coming back. They tip it ahead. Looking to walk in. Kennison came out to try to Cut down the angle, and they just knocked it by her. And that's Ellen Jamaicus, I believe. She had those red shoes and the gold number. And that was her. So they actually got two number 21s, but they one of the Fenwick faithful told me that Ella Demakis is the one wearing the gold 21. So now with five minutes and counting left, the clock will be dead and the officials will run the clock down on the field. That was just another breakaway walking in. Kennison, again, all she could do was come out and try to cut down the angle. And when she did, to make us just waited, took her time, and just pushed it by. Well, five different goal scorers for Fenwick. 
Now they're looking for more. They take the shot and chip it over the net. They pass the ball. They get everybody in involved. And the best thing can happen here is the official will blow the whistle. Because this one's been over for a while. Then we got three in the first half. First one by Mitchell. Allie Mitchell. Second one by Haley Lawrence. Third one by Isabella Del Vecchio. In that first half, Sky Dempsey picked up a very nice assist on a great pass out in front. And the second half, it was Ellie Morgan and Ella Demakis knocking it home to make it 5 nothing, and that's where we are. Keith has played very well in that. She's had to make a couple of really nice saves. That one got knocked in the net. And that's Sky Dempsey. So she's got a goal and assist. Would have been charitable for the official to blow the whistle a long time ago. I see him looking at his watch now. Always baffles me why when the game is out of reach, especially like when it's a little bit cool, game is over, scoreboard doesn't show th the minutes winding down. I don't know why they just don't. Great save by Kennison. Walking around, that's Mitchell again, walking around, drilling it. Kennison has made some outstanding saves. I don't know why nobody in the stands is going to say, wait a minute, that wasn't five minutes. The coaches, the teams, I'm not going to say that as the Corner kick is knocked to the net, hits the goalpost, and bounces out. Now they finally blow the whistle, and that'll do it. So Fenwick gets three in the first half. They get three in the second half. I thought they blew the whistle. I'm not sure what they're doing now. The longest five minutes. I thought th they still haven't called it off. They're going again. He's going to drop the ball and have Fenwick kick it. This is like, just put it in play. If they do this and he blows the whistle, I'm going to say, what are you doing? He dropped the ball. Now he's going all the way over to the other side. I don't understand this at all. It's six to nothing. There's been five minutes left for about the last ten minutes. He's going over to talk to Coach Foley. Uh, I thought they blew the whistle before. They should have blown the whistle a long time ago. Nobody would have criticized anybody for blowing the whistle on this one. But now, when I thought he blew the whistle, they keep it going. Now he's over having a long conversation with Jim Foley. I don't think he realizes there's two more games after this. He's having a long discussion on the other side. Meanwhile, Mackenzie Gilligan is waiting to do something with the ball. And he's still talking to Coach Foley as he walks away. This leaves a lot to be desired. I'm not sure what some of these guys are thinking about. Um, all these guys might think that everybody comes to watch them instead of the kids. So now they're going to 
dropped the ball. Fenwick kicks it away, got blocked. And he, how stupid is that? He walked all the way over to the bench, talked to Jim Foley, had a long conversation, walked all the way back, dropped the ball. When she kicked it, they blew the whistle to end the game. If that isn't the wackiest thing I've ever seen, what was the purpose of that? The game was over. I don't know whether he wanted himself to be seen or heard, but that was absolutely dumb. There was no reason for what he just did. I thought they blew the whistle before. He carried the ball all the way out to the 30-yard line, put it down so Fenwick could kick it, walked all the way across field to talk to Jim Foley, talked to him as he was walking back, picked the ball up, Drops it for Fenwick. When she kicked it, they blew the whistle to end the game. That is the most ridiculous ending I have ever seen and absolutely with no purpose whatsoever. So Fenwick will stay undefeated. They go to 7-0 oh, and 5. Samiris will drop to 5-7 and 2. Each scoring three goals in each of the first two halves. It was Sky Dempsey getting a goal and assist and other than that, it was five, six different scorers for Fenwick as they go 7-0-5, oh, as I mentioned. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm John Hoffman saying we'll see you next time.